The 17 year career of Ryan Fitzpatrick has finally reached its end. After playing in just one game for the Washington football team commanders, uh, which many say was too, too many, Fitzpatrick underwent hip surgery ending his 2021 season and has recently announced also his career. The journey of Ryan Fitzpatrick has spanned many iterations, beginning as a baby-faced Harvard product, soon evolving into a grizzled, bush-faced journeyman who's made stops with nearly a third of the teams in the NFL. Fitzpatrick's career is actually quite interesting, so today I want to snake through that, highlight some of his greatest moments, and see how he went from a QB only known for attending Harvard to becoming one of the most universally loved quarterbacks in the game, earning the nickname Fitzmagic and the lesser known Amish Rifle. Entering his 17th season in the NFL, preparing to lead Washington into the 2021 season, Ryan Fitzpatrick allowed himself some time to reflect. He thought back to 2005 when he was a rookie seventh round pick for the St. Louis Rams. He may have been an Ivy Leaguer who scored a 48 out of 50 on the Wonderlick test, but trying to learn Mike Martz's playbook made Ryan Fitzpatrick feel like a high school dropout. He said, I'm in the huddle and he would throw me in there and walk throughs and he'd give me the play, but he'd kind of whisper it and give me a few words. And I'd get into the huddle and I'm looking at, you know, Isaac Bruce and Tori Holt and Orlando Pace and Marshall Falk. And they all know how to say the plays. They'd been in the offense forever. I can't spit it out. So then Mike March said, Harvard? You went to Harvard? Get the hell out of there. And that was just my whole rookie year. Now, walkthroughs may have been a struggle for Fitz, but when injuries pressed him into duty in 2005, he didn't just call the plays correctly, he executed them to a T. When Ryan Fitzpatrick took his first NFL snap, his team was trailing 24-3 in Houston. While the Rams QB was woozy, enter third stringer Ryan Fitzpatrick. The seventh round pick from Harvard connected with Torrey Holt for his first career TD. The rookie QB eclipsed 300 yards, just one of seven to do so in his debut, and then fired three touchdown passes, including the game winner in overtime. To Kevin Curtis. Fitzpatrick finished the day 19 of 30 for 310 yards and three TDs. It was a brief snapshot, though, of success and a difficult first three seasons in the NFL for Fitzpatrick, but it was also a glimpse into the clutch play he would exhibit time and time again during his 17 year career. And I like to wonder what would have happened to Ryan Fitzpatrick and his career had he been paired with the correct head coach slash offensive coordinator, like when Jake Plummer went to the Broncos with Mike Shanahan. I mean, the best he ever got was Brian Flores, who was refusing to tank a bad roster in Miami. Speaking of tanks, a company that was once on Shark Tank, Manscaped. Today's episode is sponsored by manscaped.com slash good sports. Not only is Manscaped the global leader in men's grooming and hygiene solutions, they have the best damn boxer briefs my buttocks has ever allowed to cradle its supple cheeks. Manscaped is the only reason I tried boxer briefs, and now it's all I wear despite Manscaped turning me down to be an official model for the boxer briefs for alleged boxer stuffing. Well, that's all natural, guys. The new Boxers 2.0 are perfect for anyone, especially if you are physically active. They now have more than six color options with bundle options to save money with their three pack, which feature the jewel pouch to secure your most prized body parts. These boxer briefs keep your junk snug, which I noticed while exercising and feature a breathable design so you never chafe. Use my link below or just go to manscaped.com slash good sports to get 20% off your order. You can always get the performance package bundle uh, which include a pair of the Boxer 2 point. Oh yeah. 
After playing in four games as a rookie for the Rams, Fitzpatrick would not see the field again until 2008, when he was traded to the Cincinnati Bengals, appearing in relief duty for Carson Palmer. Fitz made 12 starts for the embattled Cincy squad, showing plenty of grit, but stacking up more losses than wins. The phenomenal job by Ryan Fitzpatrick. Just watch him sit in there. Sit, sit, sit. Trust the protection. He knows he's going to get hit, and he puts the ball up there where only Chad Johnson can make the catch. He may not have wrestled the job away from a disgruntled Carson Palmer, but he did catch the eye of a quarterback needy team in Western New York. Prior to the 2009 season, the Buffalo Bills awarded Fitzpatrick with a three-year, $7.4 million contract to back up incumbent starter Trent Edwards, who was already on thin ice. For the first time in his life, Edwards, a Stanford grad, wasn't the smartest guy in the QB room. Suck it, Stanford. And after Edwards went down, Fitz got his chance in 2009, and he let it rip. Fitz led the Bills to an even 4-4 four four record in 2009, followed by a 3,000-yard, 23-touchdown campaign that was marred by a 6-10 record. But in 2011, the Bills looked like a new team ready to break a playoff drought 11 years in the making. Buffalo started the year 2-0 with a blowout victory of the Chiefs and a comeback win over the Raiders. In Week 3, the Bills trailed 21-0 to their arch rivals, the New England Patriots, a team they had failed to beat in 20 of their last 21 tries. Then, like a bolt of lightning, poosh, something fits magical happened to the 29-year-old Harvard grad. He threw for 369 yards, nice, a pair of touchdowns, and watched as his defense grabbed the lead from the Super Bowl-bound Patriots. In the final moments of the game, Fitz led the Bills down the field, setting up Ryan Lindell for the game-winning kick. It was open season in the AFC East, finally. And a week later, the 3-0 Bills shit lost to the Cincinnati Bengals. They would lose 10 of their next 13 games to finish the 2011 season. But they beat the Patriots. In October of 2011, while Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Bills were still flying high, Buffalo inked their QB to a six-year, $59 million deal. The economics major from Harvard had plenty of money to count. But even with the new deal, his days in Buffalo were numbered. After skidding to a 6-10 record in 2011 and repeating the feat in 2012, the Bills released Fitz prior to the 2013 season. Which kind of sucks because 2013 was the year Nathaniel Hackett would, would become offensive coordinator for Buffalo. Now Hackett was young and raw, but knowing who he is now, I think that could have been a tremendous fit for Fitzpatrick. Over the next two years, Fitz, now in his early 30s, made a couple quick stops in the AFC South, moonlighting for Jake Locker in Tennessee before flip-flopping with Ryan Mallett in Houston in 2014. The Texans parted ways with their head coach, though, Gary Kubiak, after the 2013 season. And again, Kubiak would have been a perfect offensive scheme fit for Fitzpatrick's talents. But it was in Houston where his career took off with that improbable 2005 comeback that something started to click. In late November against the Titans, Fitz threw six touchdowns in a rout of his old team. That game got him a chance via a trade to New York with the Jets. And when he took the role as backup to Geno Smith, this happened. Geno Smith out six to ten weeks with a broken jaw as a result of a sucker punch Knockout. by one of his own teammates. And now you know the real reason why Fitz grew such a big beard was to protect his jawline. As strangely as the opportunity presented itself, he took advantage. And once he got his chance, Fitz did not let go. And after being traded from Houston to here, didn't know if I'd ever find myself in a position to start games again, and so... In most improbable fashion, the now thoroughly bearded Fitz Magic put together a season for the ages in the Big Apple. 31 touchdowns, a Jets record that still stands. <laughs> Fitz showed us that he had fun playing football, even while bleeding straight from his face. 
Is this live? Of course it's live. Keep going though. A 10 win season, something that stands out like a fever dream for the Jets faithful, but was unfortunately not enough to nab them a playoff berth in 2015. Needing a win against the Bills in week 17 to make the playoffs, Fitzpatrick just couldn't get it done. Throwing three interceptions and a five point loss at Buffalo. It was a bitter end to a magical season. And that's always been the knock on Ryan Fitzpatrick. He will end a hot streak with a ridiculous amount of interceptions. Fitzmagic, one week, and just Ryan the next. Even with the disappointment in week 17, 2015 was the best year by a Jets quarterback, perhaps ever. But it was unsustainable. The film showed that Fitz's breakout year was closer to a fluke than it was a turnaround. The gunslinger got away with a high number of interceptable passes and benefited from a pretty easy schedule. Plus, former Broncos receiver Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker were unstoppable that year. Credit Fitz, though, for helping Marshall have his most productive NFL season ever with 14 touchdowns and 1,502 receiving yards. But the Jets are the Jets and they inked the veteran passer to a one-year, $12 million deal to return in 2016. Fitz returned. The success from the prior year did not. In a week three matchup against the Chiefs, the New York chapter of Fitz's journey found its end. Two years earlier, Fitz had tossed six touchdowns against the Titans, but this time against a formidable Kansas City defense, he threw six interceptions. Yes, six picks. The Jets voided Fitz's contract in 2017, once again sending the veteran into the dark abyss of NFL free agency. That six pick game was so bad that people think Fitzpatrick did that every season. No, it only happened once. He threw five picks once his rookie season, had a few with four interceptions, but the turnover stigma stuck because Fitz has way too many two and three pick games throughout his career. That said, Ryan Fitzpatrick with the Jets is really where I noticed him as an entertaining quarterback to watch. But it was in Tampa for me where he turned into a legend. 2018, his second season with the Buccaneers. After the Bucks' week two victory over the Philadelphia Eagles, Ryan Fitzpatrick stood before the media in a pair of aviators, a gold chain, and a track jacket. His message? It's nothing, I mean, I think we just have to stay humble, you know, and, <laughs> and we gotta make sure we know how to handle success and all those things. Humility aside, there was a reason for excitement in Tampa. After Jameis Winston had been suspended three games to start the 2018 season, Ryan Fitzpatrick had thrown eight touchdowns in his first two starts, leading victories against the Saints and the Eagles. That hot start coupled with this drip so wet you could use Fitzmagic's body as a slip and slide turned Fitzmagic into a national star. Anyone well versed in Fitz's career arc though would tell you that this world beating play would not last. That Fitzmagic would soon melt and give way to Fitz tragic or again, my preference, Ryan. And it is easy to be cynical about a quarterback whose play follows ups and downs, but that 2018 uh, season established a basic truth about Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's not a journeyman. He's one of the most entertaining players in football. He just happened to play for a lot of teams. If you expected too much of Fitzpatrick, He'd probably let you down, but if you turned your back on him, he would make you pay. There was no window too tight to throw into, no first down not worth selling out for, but no beard on earth could sustain success with the Hall of Fame head coaching duo of Dick Cutter and offensive coordinator Todd Munkin. Again, Fitz missed a great fit with Bruce Arians and Byron Leftwich by one season. Fitz's True last chapter took place in South Beach. The plan was simple for the Miami Dolphins. They were going to tank. The team acquired Josh Rosen and Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback, but cut or traded other marquee players, stripping their roster down to bare bones. Ryan Fitzpatrick was not down to the bare bones. 
Quite the opposite, in fact, when he showed up to camp. Fitz looked like he had packed on a few extra pounds, and he had a pretty interesting explanation as to why. You know, family birthday party, which includes cake, and then we've got a uh, friend's birthday party, which includes cake, so that's six times in January. We've got three birthdays in March, March 1st, March 6th, and March 11th, which again, that's a tough stretch. That's cake uh, six out of, what is that, 10 or 11 days, and so. After flip-flopping between Rosen and Fitz, the Dolphins eventually landed on the Amish rifle. And losing just wasn't part of his plan. Despite starting 0-7, Fitzpatrick led them to a 5-4 record in their last nine games. In the final game of the year, Fitzpatrick led the Dolphins on a game-winning drive on the road in New England, spoiling Tom Brady's last regular season game in Gillette Stadium also cementing him as a god to Chiefs fans, giving KC home field advantage in the postseason, paving the way to their first Super Bowl win since the 70s. A feat they are so grateful for that Fitzpatrick is their most upvoted post in the Chiefs Reddit ever, ahead of a Michael Scott meme showing just how fucking racist Chiefs fans are. Fitz magic beats racism. A year later, despite the Dolphins drafting Tua Tungavailoa with the fifth overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, Miami still frequently turned to Fitzpatrick when the game was hanging in the balance. On Christmas Day 2020, Fitzmagic conjured his final miracle. Down two points in the final 19 seconds of the game, Ryan Fitzpatrick threw up a prayer to receiver Mac Collins, just as his helmet was twisted 90 degrees to the side. He never saw the ball land, but it found its target and 15 additional yards for the face mask penalty, which got the Dolphins into field goal range to win the game. The play immediately became a modern classic, affectionately dubbed the Braille Mary. Now Fitz may have never appeared in a playoff game, but in so many other ways, he's left behind a unique legacy. How much more was the shirt with the chest hair? Was that an accessory? You know, I, I finally, I hid it for a long time and then I realized that, you know, it's, it's an important feature of who I am. So, uh, you know, for all the ladies out there, uh, I'm taken, I'm sorry. The Harvard grad has tossed 214 touchdown passes the most of any Ivy Leaguer in NFL history. Also more than Terry Bradshaw and Hall of Famer Kurt Warner. He is an NFL icon, even if his likeness will never appear in the Hall of Fame. A man who embraced his role as the league's wild card. A mild-mannered Harvard grad whose semi-ironic legend grew at the same pace of his beard. Like Alex Smith before him, Fitz agreed to go to Washington so his football career could be murdered by incompetence. Oh, and by the way, do you know he went to Harvard? Should be a cakewalk, sounds like. Wow, nice, wow. nice. Wow. Wow. Rookie coming through. Oh, thanks for watching the tribute to Ryan Fitzpatrick here on That's Good Sports. Please subscribe and give me a follow on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna if you like the other social medias. And watch the next video that's up on the screen. Come on. Come on.